Yo, what is good? It's your boy Caleb. And as y'all know, this video was about the old heads versus the youngins. So I've been in this Christian space for like three years. And there's so much that I've learned. Um, there's so much that God is showing me. There's so much that I've learned on the bad side. There's so much that I learned on the good side. Um, but the one thing that's really prevalent is like this battle between the older people and the younger artists who are just now kind of coming into understanding what's going on at this level. I even, I say that old heads is like the ones who've been doing it longer. Um, and my thoughts like on this is like a lot of the old heads, I don't feel like they too much wrong. Uh, and the youngins, I don't feel like they're wrong either. I just feel like as me coming in, I like to find balance in things. I like to meet in the middle. I don't like to be like, oh, they're wrong. It's like, I like to find what they're right about, you know? So there's this um, Christian rapper, his name's Shaw Baraka, and he made this like kind of like list of Christian rap. I, I treat it as like kind of like a standard that he was saying that Christian rappers need to kind of keep the standard of. I don't agree with when old heads say Christian rap is worse than it's ever been. Let me tell y'all, Christian rap has come a long way. It sounded so bad for so long. Honestly, the youngest are, we are saving Christian music. So I never used to listen to Christian music. When I was in the world, the only two Christian songs I ever heard was like Sweet Victory by Trip Lee. And that was like one of my favorite songs. And then I heard of the Lecrae songs that when I was in church and then I heard um, Blessings by Lecrae. Um, Andy Minio, I heard Andy Minio's um, You Can't Stop Me, um, Paisano's Wildin'. But bro, I was in the world, like when I was coming up, I was listening to secular artists, Drake, just name anybody from the two that came out from the 2000s. I was born in the 2000s. Anybody that came out from 2005 all the way to 2018, I was listening to every secular artist. When I did hear Christian rap, bro, it didn't sound like my favorite artist that I was jamming. So, no, I was not jamming that stuff because it just sounded corny. It sounded lame. And that's just the truth. And it's like, I feel like a lot of people are like identifying themselves to like, bro, if somebody tell me that my stuff not good, I'm going to just be like, I right, bet. And I'm going to go and make something that is good. But I feel like a lot of people are so sensitive that when somebody tell them that something's not good, they feel like it's a personal attack. I didn't say you wasn't good. I said what you made wasn't good. And I feel like... Say we playing basketball. If we at the basketball court, and I'll just be like, hey, bro, I ain't going to lie, bro. You're not that good at hooping, bro. Bro, if somebody tell you you're not that good at hooping, ain't you going to go in the gym by yourself and just put up shots and get better when you come back? You're going to be one of the best in there? I just don't take that stuff personally. God's kind of teaching me because I don't speak in the best way every time. But I'm learning. I'm in the process, especially my background and where I come, where I come from. It's like, you don't get like an easy way. Like people, like when you make something that's not good, people gonna tell you. Like my family, like they'll tell you, like that's not good. So that's that's just what I come from. So like I said, Christian rap has come a long way. I feel like the youngest, we are saving Christian rap. And when I say the youngest, I don't mean like young in age. I mean like the people who are just now getting their rise. I don't be like, oh, somebody's old, so I'm not gonna listen to them. Um, I like great music, so whatever age you are. The old heads versus the young heads. I mean, the youngest, man. Show Baraka made this list. I think that this is like the standard. You shouldn't get offended by this, bro, because you should be already doing this stuff. Like, I don't think, bro, missed too much on this list. The first thing he said is, bring Jesus back. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm already doing that, so it's like, okay. And if you feel like you're not doing that, then maybe you should do it more. You know, this is a generation where we want to seek Jesus. We do not try to hide the, the fact that we serve Jesus and we love Jesus and we're open about it. But one thing I'm going to say is 
in music and in art, people don't really understand. Bro, you say in Jesus 50,000 times, don't make it a Christian song. And even as a listener, like the listeners of Christian music, y'all got to like up it because a great song doesn't have to be Jesus, 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 Jesus or scripture, 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 scripture. Who, the greatest artist in the world, Jesus Christ. Look at his stories, bro. Most of his stories, the prodigal son, yes, it's about the king. But he's not saying Jesus, 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 scripture, scripture, scripture. Like, no, he's telling you a story. If you understand the Bible, you know some people heard that story and they was like, wow, that was a great story. And some people heard the story and they understood the kingdom. Some people heard it. Even the disciples had to say, why are you telling us stuff that you're not telling the masses? Because not everything got to be upfront, bold on a billboard. Like Jesus was trying to make stuff that people could figure out. Like in the music that we make in, how I say all the time, you got to put the music in the medicine. You got to mix the two because Jesus was out there telling stories and some people got it. Some people didn't. That's OK. Everybody don't got to get what you're saying right off bat because the parable is hidden for a reason for you to seek it and find it. That's another thing with Christians. Let people be able to seek and find it for themselves. Stop trying to seek and find it for them. Being a Christian is a choice. Stop forcing it on people. It's just lame. He's saying bring Jesus back. Yes, I agree. There's a balance to it. Bring Jesus back. But Jesus also, the greatest artist in the world, told stories. And he wasn't just saying Jesus, 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 Jesus. And a lot of them songs back then, y'all just was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Scripture, 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 scripture. Break down the principle of the scripture. Maybe you could talk about love in a biblical way. Maybe you talk about trust in a biblical way. Maybe you talk about peace in a biblical way. What does that look like today? What does that look like in the kingdom? Because that's the problem is a lot of Christians, they want to say, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. And it's like, cool. But what else do I do? What's the alternative? What does that look like? What does that sound like? That's what art is. Art is a visual and audible representation of a lifestyle not just oh we just want to hear scripture all day if you want to go read the bible <laughs> christian music shouldn't be your bible go read the bible if you want scripture if you want to hear principle broken down into stories art in artistic ways that's what music that's what christian music is number two he talking about learning english but duh you should be learning english He's not saying nothing that's wrong. Learn English. Learn uh, metaphors, motives, double entendres, alliterations. I'm learning every day. I don't know everything about the English language. There's stuff that I'm learning every day and learning how to use certain stuff to make the music better, to learn how to put the music in the medicine. The world knows how to do it. The world knows how to put the music in the medicine so good. They literally, all they do is talk about sex in a crazy way talk about drugs in a way that it don't even sound like you, you figure out way later oh that song was about drugs because they're so good at hiding it into the the message of the music it's like be talented at that that is an art that the world is using christians should use it too to where when people finally find out what's going on in the song they like oh man this is a great song and then they'll be able to live with it. They'll be able to um, help them live their life, you know? Two, he said, learn English. I do not think he's wrong. I think that we all should be learning English. And if you feel convicted that you, maybe you need to go learn some more English, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that. Three, stop worrying about the mainstream. That's good. Stop worrying about the mainstream. But it's a balance to it. And you got to explain it. You can't just say, stop worrying about the mainstream. In the video, he said they will never accept us and whatever. We're not looking for them to accept us. But what I do believe is that as Christian artists, we need to be in the industry. 
And here's my thought. And I don't think a lot of Christian artists understand this. That's why it's kind of like a crabs in a barrel mentality. When they understand this, you'll see a lot of them come together more. What Christian artists need to understand is it takes minimum 300 people to change a nation. And I know this because the Romans, what they would do is they would send people off into lands to take over. Remember the Roman Empire? They would take over certain areas and they would send their people there to change the culture of the area. In order to change the music industry, we have to change the culture of the area. The problem is everybody keep going in there dolo. Why? If there's a million of them and there's one of us in there, how are we supposed to change a culture? We need thousands of Christian artists rushing into the industry together. We need to be able to hit each other up on the phone, stay close, um, pray with each other, but be in the industry and not of the industry. We can do that. And I feel like that's possible, not just in music, but in everything in the white house, um, in schools, um, Christians want to be able to make changes we need to be in the rooms of the people that are making changes. And we need to bring the kingdom mindset in these areas. Bring the kingdom mindset, not just in the church, in the music industry, everywhere. It needs to be everywhere. And like I said, we don't need to be going up in our dolo. You know what I'm saying? Don't get signed in and you, you don't communicate with no Christian anybody no more. You ain't trying to put nobody on. You ain't trying to help nobody come with you. Yeah, stop worrying about the mainstream because whatever you stress about over the kingdom of God will run away from you. If you stop thinking about the mainstream, that's when the mainstream will come to you. If you think about how do I add value? How do I bring value to people? More will come to you. The, the mainstream, the man, when I stop worrying about uh, blowing up, being the biggest artist in the world, that's when labels started hitting me. Every label has hit me because I stopped thinking about let me be mainstream let me be mainstream and I start thinking about how can I help people how can I change people's lives how can my music give people value how can people live through my music how can I add principles how can I put the music into medicine how can I make my music better that's what brought me into more uh mainstream my labels will call me and they say man it doesn't even sound like you preaching it just sounds like you spitting game. Social media in such your mouth. Um, he said something like, there's a balance to it. He said something like, if you're making a post a day, uh, you need to get off social media. Bro, it's, it's 2023. We're making posts because we're reaching God's people and we're being consistent. We don't know everything about social media. So we're posting so we can learn. Every post is learning. We're not in an age where you got to be mysterious and that's what makes people want to hear you. No, we're in an age where it's 50,000 people posting on the internet at the same time. So we are trying to compete for this information. We're trying to compete for this attention. Getting the kingdom mandate pushed out. Letting people know that there are alternatives to living the life that the world, like there are alternatives to what the world has to offer. And yes, every day, that is a daily thing that we're trying to do. We are fighting against the airways. We are fighting principalities. What I look like not being on social media, not posting like the enemy. He got people with their content. They posting five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 times a day, 18 times a day. Why can't God's people post? Uh, once a day, we're fighting against uh, the devil is a prince of the power of the air. We fighting in the airways. Nah, man, y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Because at the end of the day, it's not about, oh, you want to see us. It ain't about you wanting to see us. We don't care if you want to see us. Every day, social media posts get pushed to people that you don't know. Social media only reaches 20% of your actual followers. Most of social media posts go out to people you don't know. So 
the same people who see your posts, they not going to see your posts every day. And like I said, you have a problem with people posting every day, man. Just unfollow them. The unfollow button is real. He said, shut your mouth. Um, I kind of get what he was trying to say because it's like not everything should be said. Not everything is some things you need to pray about, sit back. I, I personally have been the one that moved too fast on something, spoke too fast on something. Um, pray, get counsel by people around you before you speak, because not everything you and not everything that comes to your mind you need to say. And I'm learning that too, um, as I'm growing and maturing. Have a close community in person, get slapped in person. Hey. Yes, have a close community. I don't I don't see no L's on this. Have a close community, bro. You need to have a group of friends that can hold you accountable. Because just because you pop in, you think like you think you up, you know. I, I love giving people a platform. Because when I give people a platform, it allows them to get that phase out where they think, oh, they up and can't nobody talk to them. And they got they gotta get all that out. Once they get all that out, then they can understand that. The people who was with them from the jump and holding them accountable, those are the people that God is going to want in their life. Um, don't be Hollywood, man. Allow people to hold you accountable. Don't take everything personal. Not Like I said in the beginning, not everything is a personal attack, bro. Just because you did something wrong doesn't mean that defines who you are. You just did that one thing wrong. People trying to hold you accountable because they don't want to see you go down that road. As an artist, you going up, going up, going up. I know me. I keep my homies around me. I'm like, I send stuff to them. I'm like, hey, yo, I want to say this. Before y'all even see what I'm saying, I send it to them. They read it. They watch it. Uh, before I even move a type of way, I'm consulting with my wife. I'm consulting with my friends. I'm consulting with my family. I'm consulting with my pastor. Like, I'm, I'm picking everybody's brain before I even go and try to say something or do something. And the community holds me accountable, not just as an artist, but as a person, as an individual, how I'm treating my wife, how I'm treating my friends, how I'm treating my family. If I do anything sideways, my people's hold me accountable. Um, before the record deal, good counseling. Yes. Um, before the record deal, you need counseling, bro. I, so many people I know, man, sign it, sign it, sign it, sign it, man. There is so much to know about this recording industry about music about signing there's nothing wrong with signing but lack of information what the bible say lack of knowledge people perish you can perish your whole career off signing a bad deal get counseling bro read books know what you're doing before you sign and ask the people around you how many times i done i know people who don't ask the people around them who have knowledge on these things you can, you can get the right deal that you want. You can sign at the right time if you consult with others, if you pray with others, if people fast with you before you sign. But it's so many things that you need to do before you sign a record deal because once you do that, you're going into ultimate warfare. You need a body around you to be able to help you in that mainstream warfare that you will receive. And also, you know, it's not a secretive thing. People just need to have more open conversations. Let the genre grow with the audience. Yes, he is a million percent right. And I'm going to explain to y'all why this is so right. If you are older and you have family and you are not 18, please give me more than just you shot the devil and Jesus, Jesus bars like Explain to me the wisdom of being with a family, having a wife, um, the challenges, the struggles you're going through. The I want to know because as a younger Christian, I'm 23 years old. As a younger Christian, I just got married. Maybe he might make a song about marriage that relates to me and it's hard. That's hard to me. Just stuff about real life that I can learn from and live through. I don't need songs that have no context. I don't know where you are, how old you are, where you're from. Like, give me context, man. Because if I want to read the scripture, I'm going to go to the Bible. But if you breaking down scripture in a way that I can understand what's going on in your life, I can 
relate to the stuff that's going on in your life. I can relate to the principles that you're um, that you're dealing with, that you're teaching. Um, you have wisdom as an older artist. You have wisdom just being on the earth longer. What's up, babe? I'm making a YouTube video. Well, you asleep. Supposed to be working on Sundays, but he's working, so he's in trouble. Look, I'm gonna slide, but <laughs> she was sleep. I gave him some time though, y'all. I wasn't rude. I gave him some time while I was playing. I knew he was in here working, and because he's addicted, I'm trying to get him <laughs> off of it slowly. Because that's how you have to do it slowly. So, anyways, I'm gonna finish this list tomorrow, and um, I rock with y'all. A two thousand E N T O C O E. All right, y'all, man. Y'all have a blessed.